All right, so um, the question that you have for number one says a prescriber asks you to prepare 100 grams of a 1 in 5 dilution of hydrocortisone, 0.1% ointment. Um, the recommended diluent is emulsifying ointment. How many grams of hydrocortisone beauty rate 0.1% are needed to prepare the requested ointment? So the key thing you want to pay attention to is the 1 in 5 dilution. Um, and also the concentration and then the quantity. So you could go ahead and use the algebraic approach, you know, C1Q1 plus C2Q2 because you have two components and then you have a C final, Q final, okay? Um, your C1 is going to be 0.1%. You don't know what Q1 is. And then also um, we can set up a C2Q2 and then we have the C final, which you don't know, and we actually, we can easily determine that. And then your final quantity, which is basically 100 grams. So you have your final quantity, you know your initial concentration. Because you're just using ointment, emulsifying ointment, it has no active ingredient. So your C2 will be equal to zero. So this goes away. And then your CF, which is your C final, it's a 1 in 5 dilution. So that's basically 1 over 5 times 0.1%. Okay. So you can actually rewrite that second statement as 0.1% of Q1 being equal to 1 over 5, 0.1% times 100 grams. Okay. So all of this stuff that we did here, you could actually, I, I'm just trying to elaborate and so, so that we know where the CF is coming from, but you could do it all in one straight shot. Now, if you did that, you end up with Q1 being equal to 20 grams. Okay. So just to recap on this question, um, the key thing was basically to, to know that this is zero and that your C final, because it's a one in five dilution is actually going to be one fifth of your initial um, concentration. Now the rest, um, you could easily do with algebra because this goes away. And you're just left with Q1 being equal to one over five times a hundred, which basically is 20 grams. So Q1 should be 20 grams. All right, um, your next question says, a prescriber asks you to prepare 150 grams of a one in five dilution of low coil ointment. Um, the recommended diluent is emulsifying ointment. Um, how many grams of local ointment are required for the one in five dilution? So this is fairly similar to your previous question, um, the one, the question one. The uh, important quantities here are your 150 grams, which is going to be basically your final quantity, and then the dilution, okay? So once again, you can go ahead and use C1Q1 plus C2Q2 is equal to C final Q final. Um, like we said, C2 is your emulsifying ointment. So it has no API in there. The concentration of that will be zero, which means all of this goes to zero. The one thing that is not told you directly is the concentration of the, um, of the, of your low coil ointment. All right. So because it's pure, the C1 is going to be a hundred percent. Okay. So you have a hundred times Q1 being equal to C final times your Q final. We know that Q final is going to be 150 grams. The C final is going, is a one in five dilution. So it's basically going to be one over five times 100. Okay. So you have one over five times 100, all of that times um, 150 grams. Okay, so apologies for the, um, not really showing it clearly here, but basically this will go away and then you have five divided, 150 divided by five, that gives you 30. So your Q1 is going to be 30 grams, okay? So once again, just um, to highlight the key things, um, what do you want to be, conversant of or, or basically understand is your C1 is going to be 100%. Your C final is 1 in 5 dilution. So it's going to be basically a fifth of 100. 
and then your final quantity is given you. So when you set up the algebra, your actual solution becomes Q1 being equal to 30 grams. Okay, so that's how you do that one. All right, so your third question, you have um, an 80-year-old boy who weighs 28 kilograms and has hypokalemia. Um, he weighs, he requires potassium chloride 2 millimol per kg to be given IV over 12 hours. Um, you have the infusion bag of potassium chloride, which is 0.3%, um, and is being used to treat the hypokalemia. The question is, what's the infusion rate in milliliters per hour? delivered to deliver the prescribed dose and the answer is needed in the nearest whole number um, so the first thing you want to do is basically use the the normalized um, dosing so you have two millimoles per kg so two millimole per kg um, the weight of the patient is 28 kilograms and is the IV is given every 12 hours. Okay, so the kg will cancel out and then you end up with um, maybe 4.67 millimole per hour. For the 0.3% solution, uh, we do know that each liter, which would be a thousand ml, so a liter is a thousand ml, each liter contains a uh, 40 millimole. Of KCL. So this goes out and now you're in units of milliliters per hour. Now if we go ahead and compute this you have about 116.75 I believe and so to the nearest whole number that will be 117 milliliters per hour. Okay so that's how you do that one. Um, just to highlight the key things you want to make use of the normalized dose um, with the patient's weight and the time frame. So this is in hours, actually. Um, and then the other thing is to make use of the conversion factor for the 0.3% KCL bag. So in that one, you have 40 millimoles in a liter. Now, if you go ahead and do that, you end up with a flow rate of 117. That's 117 milliliters per hour. Okay. All right, so in this question, you basically write in terms of how you approached it. You wanted the final concentration of 0.25%. Um, and then you do know the concentration of the intermediate, which is 1 is to 20. So uh, it's basically saying that you have some concentration of the intermediate, and that's one part out of the 20 parts. And so if that's the case, that will give you a final concentration of 0.25%. Okay, so what will the concentration be? So basically it's going to be C1 equals 20 times 0.25%, and that should be equal to 5%. Okay, so that's how you would address this question. You were right on that. Um, I, I'm not sure there's any other approach, and even if there was, this would be the most expeditious one. Okay. So you have an answer of 5% and basically it's going to be your 20 times the 0.25 and that's the solution that you do get. Alright, so I hope all this helped. Um, let me know if you have more questions.